This video covers D3 and JSON. The structure of this video is as follows. JSON revisited. D3 associative array operators. D3 data operator revisited. JSON in the D3 data operator and the summary. All right, let's get started. JSON revisited. JSON is a text-based open standard designed for human readable data interchange. It was initially based on JavaScript objects. It is derived from the JavaScript for representing simple data structures and associative arrays called objects. It is now an open standard that is programming language independent. As you can see, the difference comes from double quotes around the keys. This will come in very handy as we construct more complicated data visualizations using D3. We use JSON to get comfortable with the data interchange format. As of the time of this recording, these are all the programming languages that are able to parse and generate JSON data structures. D3 associative array operators. Margin is a JSON object because of the double quotes around the keys. That said, it is still a JavaScript object literal, which also means that it is an associative array. Much like D3 provides additional methods to the JavaScript array methods, D3 also provides additional methods to the JavaScript associative array methods. These methods are D3.keys, D3.values, and D3.entries. D3.keys returns an array containing the property key names of the specified associative array. The order of the return array is undefined. Let's look at an example in the JavaScript console. First, we define our margin JSON object slash JavaScript object slash associative array. Then we pass this object into the D3.keys operator. As you can see, D3 returns the keys of each key value pair in the associative array. Note, even if we remove the quotations from the left key, making it a regular JavaScript object, D3.keys still returns each of the keys and in quotes inside of the array. D3.values returns an array containing the property values of the specified array. The order of the returned array is undefined. Let's look at an example in the JavaScript console. First, we define our margin JSON object slash JavaScript object slash associative array. Then we pass this object into the D3.values operator. As you can see, D3 returns the values of each key value pair in the associative array. Note, if we put quotation marks around the number 50, D3.values will return the array of values with the 50 as a string with quotations. It is worth noting that when you receive a JSON data structure, you cannot assume that the values will be strings or numbers. You will have to check the values to make sure they are what you're expecting and convert if necessary. D3.entries returns an array containing the property keys and values of the specified associative array. The order of the returned array is undefined. Let's look at an example in the JavaScript console. First, we define our margin JSON object slash JavaScript object slash associative array. Then we pass this object into the D3.entries operator. As you can see, each element in the returned array is an object. D3 returns the values of each key value pair in the associative array inside an object. Each object has two entries, an entry called key, and an entry called value. Because this is an array, let's look at the first object. Because this is an associative array, we can call the key 
or value by name to get the data. D3 data operator revisited. This is the D3 data operator. We have seen it before when we gave it values to bind to the selection. The data operator joins the specified array of data with the current selection. First, we define the data inside of the D3 data operator. Though, when we first talked about the D3 data operator, we also covered that the values passed in could be an array of data values such as an array of numbers or objects or even a function that returns an array of values. Then, we moved to make things more modular and easier to read and define the array of numbers outside the data operator before feeding in the array into the D3 data operator. Now, instead of filling the array with numbers, we can fill it with objects. The D3 data operator can take in an array of data values that contain objects. So we can use objects to store and bind a great deal more data to each of the DOM elements. JSON in the D3 data operator. What is great about doing this is that we can be very descriptive about the properties in each object, both in the keys of the object as well as the values. Let's look at an example in the JavaScript console. We start with an array of JavaScript object literals. The array contains four JSON objects. Each JSON object contains a direction and a number of units. If we look at the first row, the keys of that object are direction and units. The values of that object are top and 20. Also, note that the spaces are added for readability. Next, let's bind the data to HTML paragraph elements. This code should be familiar to you now. We select the body element. We select all the paragraph elements. Next, we pass in better margins, an array of JSON objects, into the D3 data operator. We grab the enter selection with the JavaScript object placeholder elements for each data element in the array. Then we merge the enter selection and the update selection by appending paragraph elements to each placeholder element. As you can see, this created four paragraph elements. Each of those paragraph elements now contains a JSON object in the data property. Let's play around with the paragraphs now. Using the D3 text operator, we write an anonymous function to return the thing attached to the data property. As you can see, it returned a JavaScript object. If we look at the variable and click into the arrays, we can see that the thing attached to the data property for each paragraph is indeed a JavaScript object. Next, we can use the associative array functionality to get the direction of the object. As you can see, the paragraphs now contain the text of each of the directions. Next, we can use the associative array functionality to get the units from the object. As you can see, the paragraphs now contain the text of each of the units. Because we are writing an anonymous function, we can do anything we want inside because it is a JavaScript function. As you can see, the paragraphs now contain the text of each of the directions and the number of units for each direction. The great thing about this is that you can specify as many key value pairs inside of an object as you want, which means you can attach a treasure trove of data to each DOM element, which you can then get out using an anonymous function or named functions. The summary. This video covered JSON Revisited, D3 Associative Array Operators, D3 Data Operator Revisited, JSON and the D3 Data Operator, and the summary.